Jorn Valdegard, winner of the RAC Rally last year, leads the 168 competitors away from Birmingham to start the final round of the Sedan Championship. Shortcuts seem to be quite in order on the twisty tarmac roads of Budley Safari Park. This is typical of the spectator stages which make up the first day's rallying. Stig Bloomquist follows the accepted line in the Saab Turbo. Marco Elaine has chosen to drive a Stratos for this event. Mikola follows the fast line too, but the tarmac is slippier than it looks. leader is Walter Rawl, who finds traction on these stages no problem at all, thanks to the strategic location of his co-driver. Ari Vatanen is the first driver to stick to the official route. Pond follows the majority line, but finds 300 horsepower, something of an embarrassment, and almost copies Mikola. The Chevette was designed specifically to win the RAC rally, so Auricola is trying particularly hard. Despite the weather, over 40,000 spectators crowd into the now traditional stage in Birmingham's Sutton Park, where Valdegard is first through the infamous Ford. Elaine takes over the lead in the manoeuvrable Stratos. He has no trouble at all with the Ford, unlike at least one of his fellow countrymen. That's car number six is on in Ashford. He went straight on. He didn't read that at all well. Auricola is fifth, with all the forests yet to come. <laughs> Clark leads the Sedan Championship and only needs a good finish on this event to win the title. He takes no risks on the first day. Russell Brooks, joint second in the championship, is also up amongst the front runners and trying hard in front of his home crowd. John Taylor demonstrates his rallycross technique. Do you remember the first stage this morning? Yes. What do you remember about that? Oh, Christ. I had an accident there two years ago, and um, it was very slippery again. I suppose that's something to do with the camels and the lions, isn't it? Bjorn, what sort of day have you had? Uh, hasn't been too bad. Slippery. I thought up with the spin in the first corner of the rally. Roger, what sort of day have you had? Uh, as you know, it's been wet and slippery, but uh, nothing's gone wrong and I've enjoyed it. Do you know why you're lying? Oh, I haven't a clue. Uh, it's early days yet. Day two brings the first forest stages, but Bloomquist is soon to retire. Elaine continues to lead. As they reach the longer forests, Mikola makes his move. Pond has lost several minutes with jammed rear brakes and he's well down the field. Brooks has also suffered locked rear brakes, dropping him out of contention for the moment. Elaine leads by over a minute, the nimble Stratos still proving unbeatable in the slippery conditions. Mikola starts setting the pace, however, and moves into second. Despite his own backseat driver, Rawl drops to third. 
the TR7 starts to climb through the field and Pon promises to remove his brain for the night stages. Clark is still driving steadily, well inside the top ten. Voldegard's car suffers several minor problems and he can't keep up with Mikola. John Taylor's Escort is the only one fitted with fuel injection and this is causing trouble. As Kielder approaches, Clark arrives for routine service. Auricola is now fourth, but his Chevette has problems. And five gallons of fuel. Voldegard is having trouble with his brakes now. He calls in for a quick check. From the front? Yeah. Well, do, you want, do you want to leave yeah. them in? Yeah. Yeah. Well, what, what about the balance? That's okay. So we leave the pads as they are. Or change the back for the DSM. But the DSM the well, if, if, if the balance is okay, yeah. you can have new pads in the back again then. Then you've got to burn that lot in. Yeah. yeah but I would leave them until next time. Clark's only problem is a broken starter motor, which the Ford mechanics change rapidly. Penty Auricola seems to be in some doubt about fitting an air filter for the long forests. The working conditions don't impress the Ford mechanics at all. Clark sets out for the toughest section of the rally, 60 miles in Kielder Forest. Now the Ford team make their move. By the time they reach the Lake District, Hanu Mikola leads by over seven minutes. Clark is now third, whilst Elaine Stratos and the entire Vauxhall team have gone missing. Rawl is fourth behind Clark. Most uncharacteristically, Bjorn Valdegard has had an accident, but he still manages fastest time on this stage, and he holds second place. Brooks is back in the top ten, and having a terrific tussle with Tony Pond in the unwieldy TR7, he too moves up the order. Helping to organise Ford's complex service schedule is Graham Robson. Whose clutch are you changing? Uh, we're changing Roger's clutch purely as a routine uh, operation because they get such a lot of hard work on this event that rather than have a, an enforced change, we've got about half an hour to spare at Newby Bridge and we're doing it there. Into Wales for the final two days and Nicola already looks a winner. His lead is still over seven minutes and the next two places are held by his own teammates. Voldegard himself is two minutes clear of the third place man, but he can do nothing about Mikola. Pond is putting absolutely everything into his last ever TR7 drive. If he doesn't win, it won't be for want of trying. Brooks is now on his favourite stages, and he begins to close the gap on Raw. Mikola has no problems at all. His escort requires only routine servicing throughout the final loop. Co-driver Anna Hertz can afford to be polite. Next to arrive is Valdegard. Brooks is still running, but Roger Clark appears to be missing. Still maintaining your lead? Yes, yes. 
Any problems with the car? No, not at all. I just couldn't let it out. Just taking nice and steady now. Yes. Yes, you're into third now. Uh, yes, we caught Walter all up on the long anti hutch, Dave. Um, in fact, we're quite pleased because we actually passed him on the stage, so we took the lead from him. And then he went off on the following stage, I gather, and lost about 15 minutes. Trying to keep up with you? Peter. <laughs> I would like to think that, yes. Um, we've not heard a lot about Tony Pond, but we gather from an official result that he's some way behind as well, so he must have had some problems. Roger, you had some bad luck. Right, so not with my year. <laughs> well, what happened? Um, we had a clutch break going through one of the stages, and uh, we were driving without a clutch. And we came to uh, a rather tricky corner and uh, misjudged it and went off. But the, the problem, we got the car sorted out and uh, we tried to start and we had no clutch and we had no starter motor either, so we couldn't move the car. When you say it hasn't been your year, you, you're leading the championship, so it's not been a bad year up to now. Well, we were looking forward to doing one on the RAC. Very bad luck. Life. The penultimate stage and Mikola is now sure of victory. With less than five miles to go, he leads by almost six minutes. Voldegaard is equally safe in second place, six minutes clear of his pursuers. Brooks really storms through the last stages to make it a 1-2-3 for Ford. Pond ends his Leyland career on a high note with fourth. Last minute engine problems drop the unfortunate rule to sixth. His own problems finally solved, John Taylor finishes seventh. For the seventh year running, a Ford Escort wins the RAC rally. For Ford, it's a particularly sweet victory. A major strike at the factory forces them to rely on dealers to prepare all their cars. In the end, it makes no difference at all. Hanu Mikola and Arne Hertz get the champagne yet again. It's their fourth international rally win of 1978 and gives them the Sedan Open Rally Championship. Circuit of Ireland, and last year's winner Russell Brooks leads the field away from the Belfast start. Three, two, one, go. Car four is Finland's Hanu Mikola. Now in his 11th year as a works escort driver, Britain's Roger Clark. And Billy Coleman, hero of all Ireland, is back at the wheel of the Lancia Stratos. The first day, and Brooks is determined to win the circuit again. Coleman completes less than a dozen stages before finally retiring mid-stage with a burnt-out clutch. Mikola, driving with a sticking throttle, loses more than 10 minutes when he slides over a bank. Also having throttle trouble, Russell Brooks has to operate his car from under the bonnet, whilst co-driver John Brown does the steering. The special stages are meant to be closed to all normal traffic, but this Irish farmer doesn't seem to have got the message, much to the annoyance of Marco Alain in the works Fiat. Roger Clark is holding fifth place after the first night. Brooks is now storming through the field after his early troubles. Penty Auricula, despite his brake problems, holds fourth place. The village of Kilmakilligi Harbour is typical of the scenic stages of the famous Sunday run through Kerry, 
Russell Brooks proves unbeatable here and snatches the lead from McRae's Chevette. Alain finds these stages hard work. Although he led the early part of the rally, he now drops to third. Clark inherits fourth place when Auricola retires, and the English driver now sets out after Alain. Brian Nelson has trouble with an enthusiastic spectator. Brooks now has a commanding lead, but he's obviously feeling the pressure. In his efforts to grab first place, teammate Clark gets quicker and quicker. He's fastest on 11 of the last 14 stages. Rally leader for two days, Jimmy McRae, also begins to make mistakes. So does John Lyons. Brooks wins from McRae. Alain and Clark. Congratulations. Thanks for yeah. two years running. Oh absolutely super. I mean this year's rally was incredibly tough. Uh, you know, even just to get here is very welcoming, but to win it as well is sort of double pleasure. So it really was a very, very tough event. Back in mainland Britain, 250 miles of Welsh forests await Penty Auricola's Vauxhall Chevette. A confident Hanu Mikola leaves the Cardiff start and immediately sets the pace. Russell Brooks is close behind the Flying Finn in his similar Ford Escort. Marku Alain seems intent on redesigning his Fiat. Okay. I thought you'd like to have those first oh. for me, yeah. I, I, I know you're in. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Andrew. Thank you. I know this in, uh, you're in. In the jumps. Yeah, yeah. As the rally moves into the magnificent flowing forests of central Wales, Clark begins to catch Elaine's Fiat. But it's Mikola who's totally in control, leading by over two minutes. Clark moves up to second, making it a Ford 1-2. Hanu's only problem so far is a missing rear window. Roger is having a tremendous run, setting times that only Mikola can beat. Brooks is trying to make up time after suffering a blown tyre and losing eight minutes. The final four stages are on the daunting tarmac roads of the Epid military ranges, where Clark continues to pull away from the Fiat. Beating even Mikola on the last stage, Brooks completes a climb through the field into fifth place. But the rally belongs to Hanu Mikola and Arna Hertz. Russell Brooks leaves the Aviemore start of the Scottish rally. Marku Alain has come straight from the Acropolis rally and starts the Scottish feeling very tired. Still struggling with the new Vauxhall engine specification, Jimmy McRae is obviously keen to do well on home ground. Clark is fighting for second place behind the flying Mikola. Tony Pond finds the TR7 hard work in the bumpy Scottish forests. That's what I was saying to you. What, is, is it that what's doing it? Is the car kicking into a corner? Yes. It was, but it was the front end that was doing it then, and it's still doing it now. That's what you're saying. 
yeah, what happens? You go, you turn into the corner and you feel the back sort of go. The tired Elaine catches up on his sleep whilst the Fiat mechanics work. Leyland seem to have troubles of their own. Pons TR7 refuses to start. <laughs> Russell Brooks' chance of victory is gone when he drops to 13th position following a short excursion. Roger Clark has also been off, dropping him into 6th place. It wasn't a particularly hairy crash, all we did was just slide sideways into a very muddy ditch. Uh, we couldn't get any traction to drive out and we were stuck there. There was no mechanical damage to the car whatsoever. Uh, and in fact we weren't even more than a foot off the road. As little as that? Yes, that's all. How did you get out? Uh, we were incredibly fortunate. Andy Dawson in his Datsun uh, has not had a particularly happy rally. Uh, and he stopped and towed us out uh, to the cost of about two or three minutes to himself, which I think is very, very generous and very sporting. Mikola now leads by a comfortable eight seconds. Clark pulls back enough to finish third, whilst Brooks climbs back to take seventh place. Having led from start to finish, Mikola wins the Scottish in impressive style. <laughs> Hanu Mikola starts the Burma International with a new sponsor, Eaton's Yale Lift Trucks. With Marku Alain away in Finland practicing for the Thousand Lakes Rally, the German ace Walter Roll gets a drive in the works Fiat. The winner of this event last year, Mikola again sets the early pace. Fiat are using this event to test new twin compound Pirelli tyres, which they plan to use on the RAC rally. Works Vauxhall driver Chris Slater is back in an escort for this event. Clark tackles the first of three tarmac stages in Glasgow's Bella Houston Park. Mikola makes a rare mistake on stage nine and drops to fourth place. The new rally leader is Russell Brooks. As the rain continues to team down, the rally moves into the classic forests of Argyllshire. The young Australian driver, Greg Carr, is setting regular top ten times on his first ever British rally. What did Hannah just say? He reckoned that Britain was going to sink shortly with all this rain. So what do you make all this rain then, Hannah? Oh, this is quite normal in this country. So what sort of night have you had then, Roger? Well, everything I possess is wet. <laughs> it's been torrential the whole night. Um, the forests are awash and... Even with the narrowest tyres on we've got, there's still ankle plane down the streets. Hard work. As the two-day rally draws to a close, Mikola is catching the leaders. Walter Rawl finds the new Pirellis less than satisfactory in the prevailing conditions, and his Fiat drops out of the battle for the lead. Clark's Dunlop seem better suited to the saturated forests, and he moves past the Fiat. Russell Brooks still leads the Burma. The last stage is just four miles long, and he starts it 13 seconds ahead of Mikola. Surprising most of the regular drivers, Greg Carr finishes in sixth place and takes the Man of the Rally Award. What's going wrong? Oh, when we had an ignition pack go, and it cost us a minute and six seconds to have it. What's that mean then? Um, depends on whose addition of time you use, but either Hannu's won by a second, we won by a second, or as we think, uh, it's a tie. And if it's a tie, Hannu wins on the tiebreaker. So Hannu, you've just been officially confirmed the winner. How do you feel? 
Oh, I'm very surprised. I never thought that I'm so lucky person. You know, normally luck is not on my side, but it looks like this time it was. Did you, but you, I feel sorry for Russell. He had a uh, very good run. He was running. As the championship moves to the Isle of Man for Britain's only pace note international, Russell Brooks is feeling the pressure. Well, very, very tense at the moment. I do before yeah. any rally, but before this one especially so, because really this one is the critical one in the championship. If Hanu took a win on this, there's no way I could win the championship. Um, if we could beat Hanu, then we'd be in with a very good chance indeed. Hanu, you've had a wonderful run of success in British rallies recently. How do you feel about this one? Looks like it's a normal weather again. It's raining, so <laughs> we are quite used to it already. Yeah. The lead is immediately snatched by Hanu Mikola. Clark is fighting for third place. Tony Pund holds a comfortable second place. John Taylor also contests third. Mikola continues to extend his lead. He's fastest on six of the first nine stages. Russell Brooks' car continues to cause problems, putting him in ninth position. Clark is having a steady run and now lies fifth. Pond is the only driver who can live with Mikola, but the TR7 shows no signs of overhauling the leader. Taylor has engine problems which drop him to fourth as the crews head for Douglas at the end of the first leg. Pond's TR7 starts the second loop. Clark has more experience on pace notes than any other British driver. With half the event gone, he still plays a waiting game. Pond is pursuing Mikola, but even 300 horsepower doesn't seem to be enough. Disaster for Ford. On the second night stage, Mikola crashes. Literally minutes ago, you passed our camera in special stage 10, and here you are standing on Douglas Promenade with the lights in the background. What, what's happened? We uh, got a uh, front wheel puncture, and uh, we went straight off the road. Tony, when last night did you find out that Hanu was out? When we actually saw him beside the road. Yeah. Right, and since then, you've built up a quite incredible 2 minutes, 23 seconds lead, which must make you almost unbeatable. What's going to be your policy today? Well, I think we'll just go quite slowly on the rough stages and try and sort of quick on the open ones where the car's very good. Clark is fastest on half a dozen of the final stages, but he seems to have left his move too late. Pond leads all the way to the finish. Clark finishes fourth to lead the Sedan Championship. Taylor drives brilliantly to take second. The organisers finally exclude Brooks for servicing his troubled escort in a control area. Well, Tony, you've done it. Congratulations. How do you feel? Great. Fantastic. Since I came across that last finishing line. It's never over till you sort of coast over that bit.